Well, hello. I thought I might share uh, another devotion uh, from the Battlefield and Blessings series. This one again from uh, Stories of Faith and Courage from World War II. Um, just a wonderful uh, generation of people, uh, quite often referred to as the greatest generation, and I can't say that I disagree with that at all. Uh, and all those WW2 vets that are out there uh, still, they're, they're living history. Uh, they're dying off every day, uh, but we appreciate you. We thank you uh, for what you did and uh, as well as what all of our other veterans have done and, and continue to do. But let's get right into today's and it's titled, He's Our Guy. Chaplain or Captain Albert Hoffman was a chaplain with the 34th Infantry Division during the North African Campaign. As one of the first Americans in the war, he began to redefine the traditional role of the combat chaplain. He didn't reflect, he didn't neglect, excuse me, he did not neglect religious services when appropriate, but he felt his primary duty was in the front line with his men. Historian Patrick Skelly wrote this, he held that the unaided wounded lying out in the field had the highest call on the chaplain's services. Then frontline troops would fight from greater moral motivation, from knowing that their accredited representative religion was with them personally. See, chaplains are visible reminders of the holy. So we're visible reminders of God uh, in and among the men and women that serve. Uh, and I'll speak more about that a little bit later, but it's very real. Uh, he goes on, the historian does, says, Hoffman, although a quiet, non-belligerent man, simply had a frontline temperament. I looked up and lost my place. Oh, no, it moved on me, didn't it? Um, frontline temperament. And the frontline troops throughout the regiment would tell each other, he's our guy. I love that. They thought of him as a personal possession, the way they did a good combat officer. Now, if any of my guardsmen are watching, I hope that you can feel that way about me as well as any of our chaplains. Um, I really want to encourage that if I can at all possible. He goes on, it says, Albert Hoffman provided an example to his men and, and to us of the most effective form of evangelism. Assigned to a combat unit, he concluded that he would be most effective if he shared the same risks as those he was trying to influence. He didn't have to be a holy man or to stand apart from his soldiers, but by sharing everything with them, he became one of them. My mind went off to think about how, um, that's why I'm trying to uh, get our chaplains to go with any and everyone that, that we can. Uh, we had recently a group of our medical group, portion of them, a large portion of them, they were activated and they'd been sent down to Miami and um, they're setting up a hospital down there. And thankfully, when that order came through, somewhere along the way, a chaplain was added to that. They said, we need a chaplain to go with us. Praise God. <laughs> That's the idea. Uh, and so we have, uh, we have one of our chaplains down there with them. And, and I'm getting to hear every day about uh, the ministry that he's doing and it's profound. Uh, it's, it's wonderful. All right, so, um, so he became one of them. He said, from this position, he was able to influence these men spiritually to an extent that would have been impossible otherwise. The Apostle Paul first described uh, this approach to ministry. It is the approach best used by all Christians, whether ordained or not, in bringing others to Christ. And here it is, out of 1 Corinthians chapter 9, uh, verses 19 and then 22, it says this, Though I am free and belong to no man, I make myself a slave to everyone. Well, that's not popular terminology uh, uh, or ministry in our day, it seems like, to make ourselves a slave to everyone. But that's what Paul says, to win as many as possible. And then he goes on, he says, I have become all things to all men, so that by all possible means, I might save some. That really just wraps up what's been my whole chaplain philosophy is, is that I try to be all things to all, all of them. 
I realize that there are some who have a like faith, a very similar faith uh, as mine. And for those members, I can be a pastor. I can, I can go that next level uh, for those members who, um, who maybe don't hold any faith or don't have a like faith. Uh, I can still be their chaplain. I can still love them. I can still minister to them uh, and serve them uh, to give God glory. Uh, and, and hopefully they'll see God, Jesus, in me uh, as, as I can desire to continue to have that relationship and hopefully see them to have a relationship uh, with God at one point at some time in the, in the future. But this presence of the religious representative, um, the visible reminder of the holy, I see it. I see it in military ministry. I see it in civilian ministry, and I never get over get over it. Um, as it's more prevalent as a chaplain sometimes, because I may walk into a room and there's there's some off color language being used or other things, and very quickly, oh, chaplain's in the room, and the whole um, ambiance maybe we could say of the room it changes in a very positive way, uh, and and then people stop those kinds of things. And, uh, and that's because we're a visible reminder of the Holy. There is a true ministry of presence that takes place when we walk into that room and it changes. And I see it in the civilian side uh, as well as a pastor. Uh, many times as families are hurting, you can be there, you don't have to say anything. Uh, many times there's not words, right? But your presence has an impact um, and it's a ministry of, of presence. In the civilian world, I've been playing golf with people where you know, sometimes you get kind of put into a foursome and you don't necessarily know them. Uh, and then, you know, before long, things are said in the conversation uh, in the group that's sort of embarrassing. And then eventually it comes up, well, what do you do for a living? <laughs> and when you say pastor, um, and I had people just immediately apologize. What is that? Well, there's a, that's a ministry of presence. Um, there is a representation of the holy, the representation of God that comes with that pastor, that comes with that chaplain, that comes with that Christian. If other people who aren't Christians know that you're a Christian or find out, you may have experienced this as well. And that's because there's, that, there's a similar ministry of presence there. Because to those people who are non-Christians, to the Christians, you are uh, many times very religious. You're, very, you're more knowledgeable in that area than they are. And they look at you as leaders um, in, in the community in that sense, I guess you could say. But uh, getting back to it, there's a very, very real sense of this. And my heart's desire is to be, he's our guy. He's your guy. I want to be that as a pastor. I want to be that as a chaplain. I hope that my chaplains and fellow pastors want that as well. Well, dear fellow uh, Christians and believers, members and family, friends of the family and family of faith, um, I hope you're faring well during this time, and, uh, and I pray that God may bless you. Let's pray right now. Father, I thank you for um, all those that are watching. I pray for your protection upon, upon them. Lord, I pray that they have their greatest need met, which is to know Jesus personally, which is to receive forgiveness of sin from you, Lord, by what you've done through Jesus and paying for our, our sin debt. Uh, Lord, as we uh, live in these unusual times, I pray, God, that you continue to work and do great and mighty things that we don't know. Uh, we trust that maybe one day, Lord, we'll be able to see and celebrate what you're doing, uh, Lord, and we look forward to that day. Lord, help us to be um, living in your will. Help us to be bringing you glory and honor, Father God, that we might see others come to know you in a real and personal way and help us lord in our own time to do devotions but lord also just to worship you to thank you uh, to love you to adore you and to appreciate you god you are awesome we love you we thank you we pray all of this now in the precious name of jesus amen well may god bless you may you have a great day and i look forward to seeing you